Hey everybody, it's uh, me, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to Alter Ego. I'm having a lot of fun with this game. I, I hope it's okay to watch. I know it's a lot of text and stuff. And maybe some of it I'm going through too fast, but it's just a lot of fun. We're going into young adulthood now. We've finished high school. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. Proverbs 13, 19. Let's see. We can purchase something. We can have children. We can work. We can get married. School. Um, let's enroll in college. I never really got to go to college. I would have liked to, but I didn't have the money when I was that age. So let's, uh, and at that point in time, there's some bad things that happened in my life, so I wouldn't have had the work discipline either. But I digress. So let's enroll in a college. Um, let's do one with a high admission standard, because our guy is reasonably intelligent. You have met the qualifications for the school. You're now enrolled. Your resources will decrease $100 every time you access the college icon. This will cover tuition and college-related costs. You'll need 12 college experiences to graduate. Okay, so I gotta do... I have to write that down in a second. I threw my pen away in the last episode, actually. <laughs> 12 college experiences. Okay, and what's this? Dating? Let's do an emotional one as a young adult. You are in a large department store shopping for some clothing. When you left the house this morning, you didn't have time to shave, so you look a bit on the grubby side. You have a question for the salesperson, but you can't seem to attract his attention. Every time you say, excuse me, just a minute, sir, uh, he said, oh, every time you say, excuse me, he says, just a minute, sir, and chats with another salesperson about what seems like to be a social matter rather than a business matter. I'm going to be calm. And, uh... I'm just going to leave the fucking store. This doesn't bother the salesperson one bit. He just goes on right on talking as you walk up the door. And I will never visit that place again. Okay, shopping. Welcome to the wonderful world of major purchases. In this icon, you have the opportunity to purchase material per, uh, possessions you've always dreamed about. You can either use cash or easy-to-arrange credit. While you are in this icon, I encourage you to spend, spend, spend to your heart's content. And please note that spending beyond your means can, and in most cases, will be hazardous to your emotional and physical health. Also keep in mind the ancient words of consumer wisdom, caveat emptor, buyer beware, in this module. You can purchase several items. What would you like to purchase? Um, uh, let us buy video equipment, because I like making videos. Oh, we're going to buy a VCR with 14 functions and a handheld v video camera. Hell yeah. Your new VCR has freeze frame, still shot uh, capability, slow-mo, super slow-mo, incredible slow-mo, and numerous other features. Your camera helps justify your need for recording events and possessions. What would you like to pay for this with? Uh, cash? Thank you for cashing in on this once-in-a-lifetime value. Come again soon. How much did I spend on that? Okay, we still got money. We got a good income. We must still have our job, whatever it was. I forgot what it was. Let us do a social activity. At a party, you meet a group of people who are into the artsy side of life. They are extremely analytical people who express themselves creatively. Some are artists, others dancers, some self-styled renaissance people. They are uh, apolitical, non-materialistic, and consider the best decisions ones to be made spur of the moment. They certainly are different. Well, I'm kind of like some of them. Um, I am not impressed. Um... I am neutral, and I'm going to do nothing. Great. They can be whoever they are, man. You seem neither threatened nor critical of people like this. This is because you are this type of person. Wait! How did you know that game? <laughs> Alright, let us go. Wait, let's leave this icon. We're not dating anybody, right? No. Let us meet somebody. Let's meet someone. We're going to try to meet someone at university. We were, ooh, Kathy? No, Bridget. Uh, Bridget? Brigitte? Oh, or Antoinette? Brigitte. I like the kind of French name. You have chosen to meet with Brigitte. She's very trustworthy, moderately gentle, not very calm. She's got a raging French temper. Moderately happy, very confident, moderately attractive. You meet Brigitte in the following way. You have noticed her practicing ballet, ballet at the Fine Arts Pavilion. Ooh. After deciding you're attracted to her, you ask her for a date. Fortunately, she accepts. Whoa, this is way better than anyone I dated in high school. 
I gotta take her on a date. And then I gotta go to class. Brigitte has an annoying habit that grates on your nose. Whenever you go to a restaurant, she licks her fingers at the table and sometimes makes loud sucking noises. Ooh, I got something she can make loud sucking noises on. What do you intend to do about it? I'm not going to do anything. I want to leave her alone because nobody is perfect. You know, I'm sure I have annoying traits too, so... What a sport. You must really be crazy about Brigitte. You make sure you are always seated in a quiet little nook in the corner. Just the two of you will be fine. Well, I like her. Well, I think I better go to class. Um, let's have a college experience. Student government organization is holding a meeting. Are you interested in running for school office? Sure, why not? You do not have the right combination of social skills and aggressiveness to get elected to office. You are voted down early in the process. I hope that counts as a college experience. Can we pick a major? Let's see. Liberal arts, natural sciences, business, engineering. We're going to pick engineering. Despite the fact that my real background is in the arts, like if I'd gone to college, I would have done the sciences or engineering, so. You may have to, uh, need to see things orderly and precise. This can lead you to avoid the messy worlds of values, social and interpersonal relationships and aesthetics. Be careful that you don't self-automate. Look at what happened to me! Is that the game becoming self-aware? A little while later, your parents are having difficult communicating lately. Like I care? I'm just glad I'm out of the house going to college. Your mother complains that your father often leaves the house and doesn't return for days. Like, I don't blame him. There are loud arguments that end with your mother crying for hours on end. They have decided to get a divorce. Well, can't say I didn't see that coming. Alright, let's have another college experience. You have just realized that you will never have the time to do a political science term paper that is due in three days. You're approached by someone with a pencil-thin mustache who will gladly sell you a term paper. Guarantee at least a B. The cost is $5. What do you do? Um, I'm going to... Um, we're going to just try and do it anyway. We're not going to buy it. You have the intellectual skills necessary to do good paper. And even in the limited amount of time you do well, you get a B plus. Boom. Didn't have to spend any money, did a good job, didn't get busted for cheating. Come on, right back to college experiences. This semester you must decide where you would like to live now that you're in college. On campus, not at home. Maybe it's better that mom and dad got divorced, but I'm like, no, they're having the divorce. I want the hell out. You assigned a roommate named Tony Castano. Is he, like, part of the mob? Although he seems like a nice enough person, he's extremely sloppy and is prone to turning his stereo up very loud and spends most of his time seeking out and ingesting federally controlled substances. When you ask what his major is, he replies, physics. I'm taking up time and space. Does this seem like someone you can live with? Yeah, I guess so. Why not? The two of you must be well suited for each other. You must be a physics major too. I don't, I don't know about that. Alright, we're going to go right back and just knock out some of these college experiences. Drama Club is putting on a production. They're asking for people to come down and join the club and audition. Yes, I'm interested. I like acting. What um, part would you like to try out for? Um, the leading male. Your social skills help you win the part with ease. Unfortunately, on opening night, you suffer from a severe case of stage fright or a flop. Damn it! Well, that's a learning experience, right? I think we need to take Brigitte on a date. Um... No, I'm gonna ask you to go steady. No, I'm gonna. We're gonna ask you to. We're gonna ask you to go steady. You and Brigitte make a handsome couple. Ah, yeah. Going back to class. Warning: This episode contains matter of a sexual nature. Am I gonna get molested in school? Pe uh, Perry Barber is an acquaintance who has taken a few of the same classes you have. She is a petite brunette with gorgeous green eyes, a nice smile, and a slim athletic body. She approaches you on campus and asks if you'd be interested in helping her paint her dormitory. Um, yeah, I'll help her. I don't mind. During the course of the afternoon, you get to know each other very well. You work together in close quarters. The room is very small, so a lot of accidental touching and bumping occurs during the day. You aren't sure, but you think Perry is coming on to you. Uh, God... I could suggest we shower together? Oh my god, that would be awesome. But no, I'm not going to screw things up with Brigitte. I'm just going to ignore any signals she's sending me. In real life, I'd ignore them because I'm just obtuse in those situations. I guess this is not your style. It is Perry's, though. She asked if you would like to help her scrub all the paint off your gorgeous body. Damn it, Perry. 
If I was single, I would be all over you and up in you, but I'm going to have to reject the offer because I don't... Brigitte is very trustworthy, and I don't want to betray her trust. How could you pass off an, up an offer like this? Um, I am going out with someone, and I don't want to cheat on her. That's just simple as... I love that that's an answer in the game. Who says chivalry is dead? You deserve a pat on the back. I will pat myself on the back. Yeah, I'm not going to... I'm not going to cheat on Brigitte. I want that hot French sex. A little while later, after returning from the doctor's office one day, your mother walks into the house and bursts into tears. She has just been told she has cancer. It is not operable, and she must be treated with a combination of chemotherapy and radiation. The family is in shock. What family? Dad left. On the outside, she looks healthy and vital, but on the inside, she is deteriorating rapidly. The doctors can give you no definite answers about her condition and no prediction of how long she will live. In the coming months, there will be much sadness. The family may begin to treat her as if she's already gone, even while she remains alive. In the months that follow, there's much sadness. A short time later, your month mother passes away. It will take a long time to recover from the loss. Will it? I mean, because my family, my family rating was like super, super freaking low. Oh, there's my acquisition, my VCR with a camera. Wow, great. Mom and dad got divorced, and then mom died. Yeah. Let us go back to school. Let's have a college experience. As a way of earning extra money, a friend of yours suggests that you pose nude for hunks of academia, uh, being put together with some business majors. Um, the job is for $110. No, I am not going to pose nude for $100, or $100 not even $110. You'd never lower yourself for just a meager $100. You're too proud. Poor, maybe, but proud. I'm not poor. I'm making good money at my job. More university. As a way of making pocket money, one of your friends suggests a tuck-in service. For $3, you or your friend will tuck in a female student living in one of the dormitories, read her a bed story. Does that sound like something you'd like to try? Why can't I be single? If I was single, I'd be like, yes, yes, yes. But I'd probably just get fat, stinky, needy ladies. Um, but I'm going to have to say no, because I'm pretty sure that's going to put stress on the relationship with Brigitte. I cannot imagine telling Brigitte, yeah, I got a new job. What's your job? Well, you know, lonely ladies, I tuck them into bed and I read the bedtime stories. Yeah, that's not going to go over well. I guess the row of sensuous Sandman doesn't really appeal to you. Mr. Sandman, give me a boner. Ooh, another sexual one. There's a concert in the student center, and you have made the arrangements to go with your friend Bobby and his new girlfriend Linda. You're supposed to be meeting them in Bobby's dorm room, and then go pick them up, and then go pick up your date. Ooh, good, Brigitte's going with us. You arrive on time, but notice that Bobby and Linda are a bit rumpled in appearance. Seems you've interrupted a romantic interlude. Bobby excuses himself so he can shower and get ready for the concert. Linda is still glassy-eyed from the tumbling around the room with Bobby. There is a moment of uncomfortable silence after Bobby walks down the hall to the showers. Linda moves close to you and tells you that you have a bad sense of timing. She leans towards you and inquires if you would like to finish what Bobby started? No! Oh my god! Why weren't these people in high school? I could have got laid so much! I can't do that. Bobby is my friend and I have a girlfriend, Linda. You are a whore. I will not put it in your whore vagina. Do not need syphilis. Linda accuses you of being overly mellow. You wonder if Bobby knows what he's gotten himself into. Yeah, I'm overly mellow because I don't want to fuck you. And my friend just had his dick in you. That's gross. I don't want to be like, yeah, my friend's dick was in you. Well, me too. I'm not a whore like you, Linda. Um, but let's... Let's take Brigitte on a date. One without Linda. While out on a date with Brigitte, she mentioned that she's been doing a lot of thinking about what it would be like to be married. What do you have to say about this? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> see, uh, go, go, go. You know what? I really like her. She's trustworthy and pretty, and... Well, you know what? Why don't we talk about it? I, we, we don't have to get married, but... I, I respect her as a person. I like her. She's very trustworthy. We've learned not to date trustworthy people. Well, it, it wouldn't hurt to hear her out. If you like the idea so much, why don't you go over to the marriage icon and tie the knot? Oh, God! She wants to get married. Brigitte's like that serious about me. But then I do get laid. Let's go to university and have another college experience. You may apply for financial aid. 
A age? Aid, are you interested? Yeah, yeah, that would help me out. How much would you like to apply for? Oh, the balance is due at the adult? Oh, I wish I had it now. I'll borrow a thousand. Uh, a little while later, you misplaced your wallet, forcing you to arrive late to an important appointment. Uh, oh, I have nine college credits. Okay. Do I need 12? I thought I needed 12 experiences. I've got debt, but I've got way more plus. And you know what? Let's ask Brigitte to move in with us. After thinking over it, Brigitte agrees and you move in together. Hell yeah! Yeah! I'm getting laid now, everybody! Bomb chicka wong wong, getting hot, sexy French lady times. Ooh la la. You're driving in a car with a friend when he runs over a dog. He seems rather insensitive about it and doesn't stop the car. No, I'm gonna be mad and tell him we gotta stop the damn car. He tells you not to worry about the stupid dog that was running around loose. No, I'm gonna demand he stop it. He ignores you, but now you're too far away from the dog to walk by. I can help. I'm gonna let it blow over, but it's still like an asshole move. Your friend seems to dictate the course of your relationship with him. His needs are filled and his temper tantrums are tolerated. Your needs are largely ignored. This doesn't sound like a very fair friendship. I know, he's an asshole. He runs over dogs. Man, I'm having fun with this. I'm just flying through here. Let's do another college experience. You and your favorite female companion, I hope it's Brigitte, have just spent the night together in the comfort of her dormitory room. Yeah, it must be. You awaken by, that means I just got laid, everybody. You awaken by a loud ring of a telephone. As you struggle to the sound coherent on the phone, you recognize the familiar voice of her parents on the other end. They ask how you are, and you say, surprise, we're downstairs and coming right up. Or they say that. Oh, my God. You know, that is fun. And by fun, I mean not fun. When you, like, have just finished or you're in the middle of having sex with your significant other, and then, like, you see their parents pull up or call. Um... I'm not going to stay in bed and let them see my natural state that I boned their daughter. I'm not going to get dressed, but try to hide it. Um, I'm going to get dressed, make the bed, and try and act like we were, nothing's happened. Nice try, except for one thing. You forgot to take your girlfriend out of the bed before making it. <laughs> what? She's the big lump to the left in gym shorts. Like, she didn't get out? I wouldn't mention... Brigitte, your parents are here. They came all the way over from Paris. And she's just like, eh. Maybe in France it's more acceptable. Alright, I think that's going to be the end of this episode. I think next episode I'm going to have to decide, am I going to ask her to marry me or am I going to, you know, just see how long I can enjoy just boning her. She's really cool though. And I'll have to do some more college stuff. So thanks for watching everybody. Our life seems to be going pretty well so far.